Hey guys, it's Jordan here from Switch Watch, back again with another review, this time of Tengai on the Nintendo Switch. Thanks to Zero Diff for providing this review code as always, so I can tell you guys if it's worth your hard earned cash or not. Let's get on with it. Tengai, also known as Sengoku Blade, is a shooter sequel to Sengoku Aces, which I reviewed not too long ago on the Switch, and it's no wonder the title is a little confusing since this second entry is quite different from the original, even switching the gameplay from vertical to horizontal. The story of Tengai is almost as meager as ever, which is disappointing after coming straight from playing Soul Divide, which did attempt at storytelling in its small little way. It's not as bad as say the Strikers games, but it's more in line with the original Sengoku Aces. Between each stage you'll have a short character utterance before having a final cutscene when completing the game. I really liked the ending cutscenes the most as they were often humorous and well worth watching for all of the characters, even if they didn't really add anything to the story. As far as audio goes, Tengai is superb, especially when compared to the original. The soundtrack of that was okay, but it was tame and I felt it lacked urgency. Tengai really has a special soundtrack since it takes the ancient Japanese vibe from the theme of the game and ramps it up perfectly for a classic tense arcade shooter. It's even great by Psycho's general standards and there are some genuinely memorable tunes here. It mixes old fashioned Japanese instrumentation so well with a modern twist. Visuals are fantastic as you'd expect from a sprite based psycho shooter. You do have the standard sky based scenery but there are plenty of nice visuals of an alternative feudal Japan. You travel in caves, through towns, the forest, underwater, it's a real roller coaster ride of environments and each stage is made up of multiple areas as you transition from gorgeous scenery to gorgeous scenery. It's not only the backgrounds though, the characters and enemies are all equally great looking and designed well. It's genuinely one of Psycho's best looking games for sure. The performance is perfect, I found no slowdown whatsoever in Tengai, as you'd expect. As stated in the intro, the game has switched from being a vertical shooter into a horizontal one. Also gone are the cool ships and this time your character is flying through the air superhero style. There are 5 characters to choose from, which is always nice. There are some returning characters but also some new ones for you to enjoy and they're all very different which I highly appreciate in my shooters. If you've seen my other reviews of classic psycho shooters then you'll probably be very familiar with how things roll here. You have your standard shot which can either be shot individually with the Y button or on auto fire with A. Of course you'll want to choose auto fire for the sake of your joycon buttons if nothing else. If you destroy certain enemies you will be granted power ups which will increase the power of your weapons. Here they act as kind of like nodes that either follow you around or shoot in a different direction. The first power up you acquire will give your character their follower or node. For example Junis has a smoking lemur while Katana has some spears that follow him. The more power ups you get the more numerous or powerful your follower becomes. At this point, after the first pickup, you have access to the charge shot which on the Switch version is mapped to Y. Holding this down for a short period will allow your follower to do a really strong attack. The more power ups you have, the more powerful it is. For example, Sho's pan thingamabobs will hold in place and unleash a barrage of lasers. Junis's charge attack is by far my favourite though as her lemur will start breathing fire out. The final thing to do is the bomb attack which can be picked up once in a while. This is usually a panic button which will destroy just about everything in your way. Careful though as just like the original, some of the character bombs aren't always instantaneous or offer universal protection like you may be used to in some other shooters. My favourite character has to be Junis just for the fact that her lemur is hilarious as well as her panic bomb being almost instantaneous when compared to some other characters. I'm sure some of you will find enjoyment in other characters too since I also enjoyed Sho. The game is very tight. With bullet hell style enemies you need to be on your toes which is difficult no thanks to your movement being a little on the slow side, plus your characters are hardly small in this one. Still, 
much more bearable than the Giants and Soul Divide. With 7 difficulty levels, you're going to be crying for mercy on anything but the lowest one. Even if you've played a handful of shooters before, its arcade difficulty will be a test for even the most hardened of shmup fans. I honestly found it difficult completing the game with the standard settings on the lowest difficulty. Even if it says monkey, you still need lots of learning and skill to completely destroy the final boss. Of course, you can change the amount of continues allowed in the settings if you want, but I suspect most hardcore shmup fans will do it the standard way, the right way. One of the really good things I enjoyed about Tengai are the multiple endings for each character. Depending on which choice you take near the end of the admittedly short run, will decide one of two endings for a character. It's well worth playing through with each character twice to see them all. Even better is that if you complete it in two player, there are different endings that involve both characters together. It's great incentive to play it multiple times with different people to see them all. There is genuinely only one complaint I have with Tengai, and that's the fact that your character's hitboxes aren't so clearly defined. Making precision judgement of where to place your fairly tall character from enemy's bullets isn't so easy. It's not as bad as say Soul Divide, but there are times when bullets pass through you, other times not. It's difficult to know where the limits are unless you play it dozens of times, which makes it not as clear cut as some of Psycho's other efforts. At £6.99 and $7.99, I think Tengai is worth the price, but only if you're into playing shooters and mastering them. It's a short playtime as you'd expect for a Psycho shooter, but it's all about the learning of the enemy patterns and trying to complete it in one credit. I could only ever dream of that, but I still enjoy playing them over and over and gradually getting better, moving on to a higher difficulty, rinse and repeat. The different available endings make it worth playing through well over a dozen times minimum, so I think you do get value there. Overall, if you're into shooters of any kind, Tengai is a no-brainer. After a good but slightly different Soul Divide released last week, this one brings the classic Psycho back and the horizontal perspective adds a nice twist from what we're used to. It's easily one of their top tier games in my opinion, with the only sour note being the indiscernible hitboxes for your characters. It has amazing roller coaster visuals, an excellent pumping traditional Japanese soundtrack and a lot of personality. It's cheap and endlessly replayable if you're into that and it's great addition to your Switch shooter library. For me, Tengai is up there with the best Psycho has to offer, along with Gunbird and Zero Gunner 2. I would award Tengai an easy 9 out of 10. Ok guys, thank you so much for watching as always, I hope you've enjoyed this review of Tengai. If you're a regular Switch watcher then, please consider clicking that thumbs up button and leaving a comment below. What do you think of Tengai? Are you ready for yet another shmup classic? If this is your first time to the channel, then be sure to subscribe for more excellent Switch content like this. We'd love it if you did that. And finally, head over to the website switchwatch.co.uk for news, reviews and features. It's well worth a daily look guys. I've been Jordan from Switchwatch and I'll see you next time. Take care.